think the first time I thought about this was I was in another organization and I saw a little story unfold. Uh, um, a junior employee put out an idea that was a pretty good one and a few minutes later a senior person um, said more or less the same thing and from then on it was the second person's uh, idea that got labeled as the solution. It happened to be the case that the first person was a female junior and the second person was a senior male and that for me was what started my interest and for me it was about power and opportunity. Nobody corrected the, the record about whose idea it actually was and from then on it was the senior male's idea that people talked about. It was a wonderful um, crystallization of how the process operates when nobody um, does anything to correct the record. I think there are lots of things involved. Uh, some people are hogs. <laughs> uh, in the paper we talk about uh, narcissists who are much more likely to want to uh, take credit for things. But there's also a uh, motive. Um, you know, credit is something that's valuable to people in their careers. It's, uh, it's something that may get them um, greater opportunities in the organization. It's also, credit is also something that allows people to um, deviate from what's, uh, what's the norm. If you build up enough credits within an organization, you get, the, you get the chance to do things that are a bit different from what other people are doing. So it's not just about power. Power certainly helps in, in, in taking and keeping the credit, but there's also motive um, and the ability to rationalize. Uh, people, um, some people take credit when it may not belong to them, um, but they do it because they're, they're uh, making up for, for lost uh, chances at credit that they had in the past. We can all think of times when we've been slighted by other people people have gotten credit for things that we've done and sometimes we get a chance later on to grab credit when it may not belong to us entirely maybe it belongs to us partially but we uh, we can rationalize in our mind that we're making up for lost uh, chances that we had how do people rationalize um, they say to themselves that they deserve it and uh, that's the most basic rationalization that, that we have uh, we think we deserve something, and we can tell ourselves that uh, that we're worthy of it. Well, well, the normative environment may take and support it. So, I mean, they may look at their organization and see instances where the organization itself claims credit uh, for things that it was maybe peripherally or marginally involved in. So, in that norm type of normative environment, they may feel uh, justified with going and uh, ahead and uh, uh, claiming credit or. Um, they may feel they're entitled because they've been overlooked previously or they may feel it's not really harming anyone that uh, uh, somebody's accomplished something and really hasn't stepped in and taken credit for the accomplishment and therefore it's created a bit of a vacuum and uh, if they step in and take credit for it uh, there's no real harm done so there's no no victim in, in, in that sense. Uh, so there are many ways that they can take and rationalize it. Uh, uh, and they're just, they're just a few. Quality of management does come into to play here, I, I think. Um, whereas if the manager's just engaged or um, one way of claiming credit would be um, when you're asked for a brag sheet for your annual assessment, if you take and claim credit for things that you have only marginally been involved with uh, or not perhaps not involved at all with, uh, that your manager be in a position to take and know that the claim that you're making is, is on shaky ground. And you can only do that if you're engaged and you're knowledgeable about uh, what's going on uh, within your operation. Uh, Deborah Meyerson um, has done some interesting work on um, leaders and, and managers who make a point of, of uh, giving credit to their subordinates. And I think it's a model for how this um, process should work. That is, giving subordinates an opportunity to make presentations to senior people. Um, she calls it quiet leadership. You can call it all sorts of things. But 
but I think it's admirable uh, to see managers who provide their subordinates with an opportunity to step up, get some visibility for themselves, and to receive some of the credit for work that's been done by a group. I think that's what we should see. Sometimes there's justice. Uh, one of the one of the stories that we looked into was about a uh, a research lab where a new member of the uh, of the team uh, took an idea that was developed in the team and presented it in a setting where he would get all the all the credit for the work that had been done by the team. A little while later, this uh, credit taker tried to form his own team within this uh, same research lab, and nobody would join his team. That's the way in which uh, sometimes justice works out. You also see it in sports teams. Um, some some uh, stars are much better at sharing the, the credit with their, their teammates and use the we word instead of I. Um, others are people who are perfectly happy to take all the credit for the achievements of the team. And I think some of those people get treated by their teammates in appropriate ways. Well, taking if you're in a group context, uh, or for that matter, any context, and explicitly um, establishing rules uh, within the group, for instance, as to how you're going to deal with these issues, either everyone gets credit equally, or you take turns, or you have some understanding as to how it's going to be dealt with. Uh, certainly in a larger sense, the norms within the organization um, and the, uh, the punishment for those who take credit inappropriately. Um, transparency is going to be, I think, quite important uh, because in a transparent environment, uh, you're going to be able to see who did what or it's going to be easily uh, ascertainable. I think an important role for senior people in this area is to think of themselves as people who are attempting to nurture the talents of, of younger people. Uh, if you reach a certain stage in your career, um, I would hope that you don't need all the ego stroking that goes with uh, uh, seeking credit that, that may happen when you're, when you're moving up in the organization. I, I think people who are admirable in this area are people who uh, quietly sit back and let other people take the credit, particularly people who've reached the stage where they don't need the credit to advance in their own careers. I think that's what we ought to see more of. If you're a younger person, I think one of the things that you can do is to talk to your boss about um, this very issue. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm delighted to be working on this project. It's really exciting to me. But I'd also like to make sure that down the road there's some acknowledgement of my contributions to this project. I think that's an explicit um, conversation that, ought, that, a, that a, a younger person ought to have with their supervisors so that you can know from the start whether this is something that's likely to happen. And if you're mid-career, you're probably may as bright at this point. You, you understand how the organization operates. And so you have to, being sensitive to the cues, uh, see when it's appropriate to make a claim for credit and uh, when it would be inappropriate or look like it's credit, credit mongering uh, as, as opposed to just uh, seeking appropriate recognition uh, for something that, that's done. And the normative environment's going to affect that, uh, I think, substantially. I think what makes this an interesting area is that um, is that credit is, uh, is ephemeral. Unlike owning a house or a car, something that you have a, you know, some piece of paper that, that demonstrates that you own it, credit is something that's up in the air, that is up to an audience to decide whether you deserve credit or not. And so some people go to great lengths to stage manage, the process so that it looks like they are the ones who did uh, all or most of the work, frequently by making presentations about it. But in the end, it's up to the audience to decide whether you deserve a credit or not. And that makes it uh, a contested terrain that people can have different opinions about. But sometimes it means that justice prevails and an audience can see that the person who is making the claim doesn't actually deserve it. <laughs>